Here I'm going to assemble the TB Mesh Tastic Communicator with my TurboPrint 3D rugged case. The Laura 32 T beam either comes with the screen as a separate purchase or as a screen in the kit, but either way, you're going to have to solder it on. The screen kit will come with a four pin header, and that header will line up with the 3.3 volt pin lining up with the VCC pin on the screen, and the rest of the pins being ground number 22 and number 21. The header goes in from the front of the board and the pins will be soldered from the back. Now, I usually just sit it on a piece of foam so the weight of the board holds the pins in nice and tight. Once the header is soldered on from the back, I like to clip the leads really short. Now push the screen onto the pin header and I usually use something underneath it just to kind of prop it up so the screen solders on flat. Once it's soldered on it will be held in place with the pins. Now that it's all soldered together, we're almost ready to put the battery in. However, you need to make sure that the antenna is on before you apply power to anything on this device. With the antenna installed, I'm ready to throw in our 18650 pre-charged lithium-ion battery. Just kind of clips in like an old AA does in any other device. And you can see here, this one already come with mesh tastic built into it, and it's already ready to go. So now we're going to connect it to an Android device using the Mesh-tastic app. I ended up having to update the firmware on the T-Beam, which is easy to do, can be done through USB on the computer, and is described in their website uh, how to do it, and I'll link that down below in the description. So you can see here you just need the number from the device to log in it, just like any other Bluetooth device. And once it's connected, Mesh-tastic can see it, and yeah, you can send and receive messages between two or more units. Since I already have a network set up I want to join, I'm going to set up this device to scan, or well, unlock first and then scan for another code, and I'm going to get out my other phone, which is attached to my other device, which will have the QR code available to scan. All you gotta do is scan it like any other QR code with the camera on the device you want to join in and you should be good to go. Now that both devices are on the same network, I'm going to try and, uh, well, you can see them here on this, it doesn't hasn't sent a message yet so it doesn't seen it, but I'm going to try and send a message and that should ping the network and join everything together. And yeah, there it is, received on the other device. send a message back just to make sure it's working both ways and there we go now that everything's tested and working we're gonna put together the 3d printed case I designed personally now I find this case is a little bit more rugged and it, I try to make it dust proof one of the ways to make it dust proof is by cutting a piece of clear sheet of some sort and gluing it into this little inlay in the front cover that will keep any dust and it's probably not waterproof but it'll keep a lot of moisture out of the whole system which should you know help with longevity and keeping it together in use 
For this purpose, you can use whatever you want. I use super glue, it seems to work good. You could use epoxy or silicone, whatever you think is gonna work best and depending on the material you printed the case out of. I personally printed the case out of PETG, so it kind of affects what sticks to it. For the best protection, make sure to get the glue all the way around, but try not to get it on the actual viewing window part of the screen, otherwise it'll make it harder to see what you're doing. So I waited about 15-20 minutes to make sure it was good and dry, and now we're going to place the board into the front cover and screw it in. So we use the four holes in the corner of the boards and a 2.5 millimeter screw should just thread right into the plastic. Now I only end up using two of them because I find it gives a little bit more flex on the board on the antenna part. It's clamped in there pretty well but just in case you drop it, it, it allows for a little bit of movement. So for that just use the two kitty corner or opposite each other. Now that the board's mounted to the front cover, we'll take the TPU gasket or in this case TPE, which I do recommend TPU, the stiffness uh, that helps with uh, keeping the door shut. As you can see later in this, the USB door doesn't really stay shut that well. But on the other cases that I've used TPU for this part, it seems to work really well. And then once you got all the parts fitted into the front of the case from the rubber gasket or TPU gasket, you put the back on and line up the screw holes. Now, to mount the front cover to the back cover, this requires four M3 by 20 cap screws or, you know, you could use whatever type of fastener you want. There should be enough clearance there for them. But I did bury the heads of them so that they are below the surface so it, you know, it's not grating on your hands to hang on to the device. There, and that's about it. So I test the buttons to make sure everything's lined up and everything seems to be good. And the only other thing to do now is plug it in and make sure that it charges with the case on it. And that's pretty much it. So if you want to do this project on your own, you can buy all the parts and I'll put all the links to everything in the description. And if not, I do sell these as complete packages. Well, if you are planning on building your own, I hope your, this video helps you. And uh, yeah, have a good one and good luck with your projects.